Hey, what's up? Jared Noble here, and uh, I'm just doing a, another YouTube live stream here. I had um, another uh, question that came up in class um, during this new class that I just started. Uh, it's, class, it's something that's come up uh, in a few previous classes as well, and I figure it's, some, it's something that I would talk about on here today. And the question is, you know, how do I get screwed, or how do I avoid getting screwed in the music business? Um, and that's a really honest question to ask, right? Because um, depending on how you're trying to get involved in the music business, uh, you want to understand um, how things operate so that way um, you don't get taken advantage of, okay? And there's a, uh, there's a thing that I learned about uh, called, it's basically minimizing your risk is really what it is. And the way you minimize your risk in any situation, especially transactional situations, is you understand what's at stake. You understand um, kind of how the game is played, really. Uh, and if you're not aware of, of kind of how things are done, then it's really easy. That, that makes, that, that opens you up and makes you a lot more vulnerable to um, being taken advantage of, right? So when, it, when we're talking about music business, remember it is a business. So in a business sense, um, we're talking about making money at some point, right? Which is kind of where, you know, it's the, that's the point of a business, right? The purpose, uh, I think it was Peter F. Trucker, uh, I think it was Peter F. Trucker said the purpose of a business is to create a customer. Um, I might be wrong on who I'm quoting there, but um, really that, that is the purpose of a business is to create a customer. So then there's a transaction because the business needs to sustain itself. Um, and if you're entering into the music business, you need to understand what is, where does the transaction lie? And then where does the risk lie in that transaction, right? So uh, really what it comes down to, if you're a music producer, I'm going to speak from a music producer standpoint uh, on this on this topic right now. And... Uh, if you're a music producer, you're the one creating the music, then you're essentially creating a product at that point. You're creating a product, and depending on um, what you want to do with that that product now, that, that piece of intellectual property, because that's what it is. Once you create it, uh, it becomes your intellectual property. It's kind of like a, a piece of real estate that you just created, and you can, you can lease it out to other people. You can have them have multiple different people use that same piece of music, right, with like leased beats, or you can give it to a music library who then can um, put it out to a, bunch, to a larger audience and then other people can shop through their music library and pull out your music and then use that music for something. Or you can um, think of it like a, a piece of real estate where you just sell a house that you've already built to one person and that person uses that song, right? So you, you're essentially giving your music to a single artist, uh, maybe at a record label or something like that. Um, so there's there's... Uh, that's a couple of ways that you can make use of your music, right? Um, and to avoid getting screwed, let's say, that's that's the thing that kind of keeps coming up for a lot of people. They want to know how to avoid getting screwed in all of this. Um, when you're putting your music out there, right, there needs to be some sort of contract involved in some situations, right? Where um, if you're, let's say, it's you're, you're bringing your music to a record label and you want somebody on that record label to use your music, then uh, th the label will come up with a contract and they'll give you a contract and say, hey, this person's going to use your music. But really um, what you want to do is make sure that um, you are registered with a, a what's called a PRO or performance rights, performance rights organization. So that way your, um, your information, you register as a producer, you get a singer-songwriter share. Now this could take way longer than um, I'm probably going to go into for this video because I want to keep it rather short. But registering for PRO and then making sure that your information gets attached to that song that gets placed with that artist. So when that mm. artist per, per, uh, produces, uh, performs that song or they put it out and uh, promote it and all that stuff and money starts coming in uh, off of that song, then um, you, some of the uh, money that comes in for that song will come to you because your information is now attached to that song, right? Um, and so... Um, avoiding getting screwed in that respect is having relationships with the people that you're giving that music to, right? So um, not just giving it out to just anybody. You want people to listen to your music, right? But you need to build a relationship and establish a rapport with the people that you're working with, right? Because this becomes a business relationship. And if you do, if you give them some music that gives them a hit song uh, in, in some fashion uh, for their audience, then they want to keep doing business with you, right? So why would they want to sour that relationship? And so 
creating a good relationship with the people that you're working with is, is one way to avoid getting screwed, right? Um, but also having things uh, written down. Uh, and when you get into things like contracts and stuff like that, you definitely want to get uh, a lawyer or somebody involved, right? Somebody who is not on the labels team, but somebody who is like your personal lawyer, somebody who will look out for your best interests with the contract. Um, all right, because there are people who will, um, uh, there, so there's something called publishing deals, which is another kind of thing where um, you have uh, a publisher, which is the person who will take your music and they will pitch that music to somebody else, like a record label or um, sound supervisor for a TV or film. And you can get publishing deals, but there's people who will try to sign you to a publishing deal and will try to like take all of your music or want to keep your music for extended period, for like forever, basically. Um, uh, and so like, you can sign different publishing deals and that's where you want to definitely get a lawyer involved and have them look over the contract, read it over and make sure that um, it's, uh, it's legit and that they're not doing anything that's going to take advantage of you uh, in that respect. So uh, when it comes to publishing your music though, you can sign, um, there are exclusive deals and non-exclusive deals and more often than not, uh, a publisher will allow you to sign non-exclusive contracts so that way you only give them certain music. So like, let's say you produce um, electronic dance music, right? And this publisher needs EDM music because that may be the popular thing right now in commercials or whatever, and they have ties with people who make those commercials who look for that music. So then you're just gonna give them EDM dance music. But you also, let's say you also make um, urban music and hip hop and stuff then they don't need that music, so they're not gonna have you give them that music. So then you're just signing a, a non-exclusive deal to where you're gonna give them uh, the music that they need for their commercials, and then you can take that other music and place it elsewhere. All right, so you can have uh, multiple publishing deals with different publishers. Um, and so like the, um, another thing about getting screwed is uh, so, uh, on that topic of, of trying to avoid getting screwed, right? So that, that also ties in with having a good relationship with that publisher as well. Like whoever you're working with, you want to have a good relationship with them. And if you're doing stuff with publishers, you definitely, one thing that um, when I talked with some different publishers, one thing that you definitely do not want to do, and this is um, coming directly from music publishers, is you don't want to try to give the same song to multiple different publishers because if this publisher over here likes this song and they take it and then they pitch it to uh, this other person for a commercial but then this publisher over here really liked that same song and you gave it to them and they pitched that same song to the same sound supervisor, then both of those um, publishers lose credibility with that sound supervisor and they've just burned a bridge. And so now you have just burned a bridge with both of those people and they're probably going to blackball you from getting any other kind of placement deals or anything like that. So um, that's one way you can screw yourself, all right? So avoid getting screwed by other people is one thing, but screwing yourself over is a whole other thing, and that's that would suck terribly, all right? So just a, an extra bit of advice about not getting screwed in the music business. Um, but really what it comes down to is understanding the business that you're trying to get involved in, right? Where, how do, how does, uh, how do transactions happen when it comes to money and stuff like that? Um, there are people who will pay you outright for a song and because they don't want to pay you royalties, but they will pay you a lot of money, like big corporations and stuff. So I have a friend uh, that I know who they've gotten anywhere from 15 to 20 grand or, well, like, I'd say like, no, I think anywhere from 5 to 20 grand um, for a single song because it's a large corporation, large company, and they're going to put that song on blast to millions of people but they don't want to have to worry about chasing down royalties and all that kind of stuff for that song. So they're going to pay you a large sum up front, say here, we just want this song and then, um, and we don't want to have to worry about royalties and all that kind of stuff. But most people want to get involved in music and create that intellectual property because they want royalties. Um, and so when it comes to royalties and having that money coming in consistently, um, that's where, you know, contracts need to get involved. Um, with, you know, how, uh, well, the biggest thing is, is not so much contract, it's really split sheets, right? Who it's, it's telling the publisher, it's telling the record label, whoever is, is going to be chasing down those royalties, who is going to get the money and how we're going to split that money up. All right. Uh, and there's a, a, a pie, uh, you can think of it like a pie where 50% of that pie is the, the songwriter and the, pub, the producer, right? The people who create the song, they own the intellectual property to the song itself. Uh, they own the master rights to that song. And then the other 50%, so that, that other half, 
is the, the publisher's share. So whoever whoever's in charge of the publishing, which is the placement of that song, where it gets placed to, where, uh, where it gets put out at, uh, that's the person who can take that part of the share. But you can also, if you own your publishing, if you have your own publishing, right, you can keep a percentage of that publishing half, uh, and you can be a publisher on that as well. So the, that's, that's one way of not getting screwed too, is maybe not getting screwed out of that half of the, the pie. If you're doing some work to place your music in different places um, and you don't own your publishing, then you're screwing yourself out of that half of the pie because now you might be getting your song placed somewhere where it's making you some money, but um, you didn't take the publishing. You know? So um, that's another way to kind of avoid getting screwed in the music business. Um, and also understanding how your product, your music or whatever is uh, being used for that business, right? So if, uh, think of it this way where like record labels have artists, right? The artist needs to keep their brand awareness up, right? They need to be putting out music, okay? If they're not putting out music, the people don't know who they are. They're, so they, they do other things to kind of keep their awareness up, right? They do shows, they do TV shows, they do uh, guest appearances in different places so they can keep their face in the public's eye, right? But they still need music because they're a music artist. Um, and then understanding that your music is going to that artist to help support their career, right? Um, so that's one thing to understand about how your music is being used, right? Um, and if you give it to an artist who doesn't have a huge following, you can't expect to make a ton of money off of that track. But what it can also do is it can build up your credibility as a producer. And if they like what you do, that might lead to other work uh, with other larger artists of theirs too. So, you know, there's there's um, no one way to go about doing all this music stuff and, uh, um, and getting yourself out there. But um, to avoid getting screwed, I would say the biggest thing is really understand um, how this stuff works, how it operates, right? How the music business operates. If you want to take songs and get them placed with artists, it's understanding how the record label works. It's understanding what kind of music they're looking for um, and being able to provide that to them. Uh, and again, building those relationships with the people in that organization so that way they know, like, and trust you and want to keep doing business with you. Uh, because if, if, you know, if you're just, if they just get a track from random track from somebody uh, which isn't likely to happen, but let's just say like you manage to get your track in the inbox or, or to in the hands of somebody who will listen to it and they like it, but they've never heard of you before. They don't know who you are. They don't know you're not a friend of a friend or anything like that. Um, it's there's nothing tying them to you to, and nothing stopping them from saying, oh, this is a great track, but I don't know who to connect with. Let me get some other producer to kind of recreate this and then, you know, we'll just get, run with it because I know this person. Uh, and that's not to say that that happens very often, but that, that has happened. I've heard of that happening. Um, um, so that's one way of not getting screwed is building a relationship with that person, establishing rapport, and then um, being and being comfortable with sharing music with them. And ha and then once they've established a relationship with, with you, relationship with you, and they they know you, and they're like you know they're going to bat for you basically because they want to pitch your music because they believe in what you're doing, they like what you do. That's a different. That's kind of a different position to be in. So um, I've kind of went a little bit longer than I wanted to go. I'm trying to keep these between five and 10 minutes. But anyways, um, so that's just a few tips on how to avoid getting screwed in the music industry. Hopefully that helps. Um, if, uh, if you got some kind of value out of that, please uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below and um, also share this with somebody else if you think they'll get some value, value out of this as well. All right, well, my, my name is J.R. Noble and you can check me out at jrnoble.co. And I will talk to you again, again soon. All right, later.